Ladies and gentlemen, you're uh, welcome to the presentation on digitalization as promoter for education and research. My name is Olfa Kanun from the Chair of Measurement and Sensor Technology at Chemnitz University of Technology. The contents you see here in the presentation were uh, acquired within the project Praze, Structural Development for Practical Skills Enhancement in Engineering Education, which is supported by DAAD within the Deutsche Arabische Hochschule Partnerschaft. And it is a big pleasure with, of me to uh, share this thought with As educator, all of us would like to have up-to-date curricula, to have modern contents of research and research labs, and to have the opportunity to prepare engineers in a good manner for industry or research, or even to, uh, to prepare them for innovation by settling down their own uh, startups. So the, thereby we have several challenges. So in the fundamental education, we need to uh, educate with concepts and methods which have a long-term uh, influence on the career because we need them every, almost every day. The contents are theoretical in, in, uh, oriented and this is why uh, or theory oriented and this is why we need a good uh, didactic and good human resources this means the experts which are able to give this uh, fundamental topics for the engineering studies we need also practice a big part of practice the, for that we need uh, equipment we need the, uh, to have the possibility to have maintenance of this equipment which can need a lot of budget and we need to raise the importance of practice among the students because at the end it makes a, uh, it is necessary to implement the concepts and to see the aspects beyond theory once we bring some concepts into practice. As um, a figure of merit, where do we feel that we reached the aim of, of teaching and learning in a good manner? This is when we get uh, up-to-date contents in uh, a time where the technology is evolving, where we can motivate the teacher for modernizing the programs and where we, we get a good supervision ratio. This means a good uh, a group number, a small group numbers, for example, in labs so that we can uh, provide the students with the necessary possibility to ask questions and to experience things by themselves. So now it comes the question of digitalization. So how can digitalization boost this um, education? So we, if we pass with, with education to the new era, can the condition be better or worse? Here I have uh, summarized some chances of digitalization for education. Uh, following a good uh, paper uh, you can access on the web from ASA. So ASA uh, experts said that the um, digitalization for education, which we faced at least um, as a, since many years, we try to digitalize, but this could, could be posted after the pandemic of COVID-19. And we remarked that um, it is working. It is well working for education, much better than we expected in some times. And um, then we remark that this uh, digitalization has other effects yeah, and could be a chance to um, modernize our programs. First of all, it boosts the education equity. This means the, to realize digital content, to make a video of a measurement setup or to have possibilities of remote access to um, have the possibility to follow the course from everywhere in the world. This means the education can be becoming more uh, equitable and um, so that the access to education becomes easier and digital contents are less expensive than uh, moving a professor from one place to another or moving a student from one place to another. Then um, all students can have access to learning. The second aspect is that we can 
customize learning. So before learning, it was always in one room with the students and the professors at the same time. Now we can get a flexible learning where some of the contents can be in presence and some of them can be asynchronous uh, so that the students can do them at any time. The professor is available via chat and can answer possible questions and then students can at the end learn more flexibly, not bounded to a certain time, to a certain time frame, yes, but not really to the same hour and so on. Then uh, the other question is the uh, students themselves, they can today attend to more sessions at the same time if they make record, for example, and or uh, they can attend easily um, also courses which are taking place at renowned universities everywhere or uh, in, in any part so that they can shape their curriculum and their CV at the end in the manner they would like to have. There was a lot of webinars possible where they can attend and they can sit where they are and attend uh, webinars in other universities worldwide. So, um, and this is the, sec the third point. So uh, we remark that education is breaking the geographical boundaries. So uh, the knowledge can be brought beyond the classroom and this is a certain uh, globalization is taking place since then. Um, the other aspect is once we have this uh, digital uh, content, we can make a better modular learning by building the modules in a faster way and we can also use the contents from previously de de developed uh, courses or from other colleagues or we can use a video from uh, YouTube or something like that so that we can have a better and easier way to design modules and uh, also for teachers and this is the aspect five which is very important I profit myself from a lot of such uh, trainings ex and exchange so we can have several advantages for the teachers and also possibilities for demonstrating contents which are before we had difficulties to do it in one room. So now we can connect via video and we can show it to the students in a good and well understood manner. So a lot of improvements which can be um, faced via digitalization and which can be uh, supported by digitalization. And this is why the digitalization can indeed um, boost the education, the education of practice and in the studies and also can make the study and studying process more efficient and the teaching process also. So it doesn't say that it has only advantages. So what we remarked is that we still need possibilities for activation. So if we try it to make the same for, form of education from the analog way to the digital way, we I remarked myself that the students didn't ask so much questions as before. And this is why experts say that a mixture of presential learning and asynchronous learning is important for digital um, yeah, for the um, webinars and for the digital learning. So first of all, I would like to highlight the practical skills in studies. Yeah, How are they important in engineering studies? So, you know, as engineers, we learn a lot of mathematics, physics, chemistry, basics, system theory, and so on. And the question is always, uh, do we have enough time for practice? Can we implement practice skills in studies or should we? Yeah? And my answer is here um, an important we should. This means um, if we learn that like um, only theoretical, we may become a bad mathematician or a bad physician because <laughs> we will not uh, take uh, the challenge with, with the specialists. But as engineer, we need always to have an idea how to implement our concepts. This is why 
supported by the IEEE within a faculty course award which we got in 2018. We developed an experimental modular platform for enhanced practical skills uh, for use worldwide. The idea behind is that the laboratory course can be based on low-cost open source platforms like Arduino, like Python. It is modular to include several courses uh, uh, and so labs, uh, including sensor principles, signal conditioning, data acquisition, and sensor signal processing. Uh, so we provide the teachers with this uh, compact form of the lab, which is low cost. We pro provide the classical course materials, but in which we take care of the fact that the student may make this uh, lab alone at home. You see it is portable and also with instruction manuals, with preparatory questions like we know from classical labs, it's everything implemented in a compact way so that this co this cover can be used for um, as an equipment in the lab, but also to for demonstrations or for realizing the labs at home version and this is a, a picture of the um, manu manuscript uh, for the lab for example for amplification in smart sensor systems we provide online accessible literature which is well selected and we maintain a simple and complete documentation this is very important because the students may make these labs alone at home and they need to come forward. So very important is the didactic of the uh, documents. They can prepare their tasks by own internet research, um, can uh, get, get critical questioning within the experimental part, and then they can uh, prepare the lab already during the lab, the, the lab itself. Here is a picture of the first version of the um, lab equipment, which is a main board to plug in different modules. So we can change these modules like you see here, for example, for amplifier, non-inverting or for a whetstone bridge. And uh, then it becomes another uh, uh, system to be tested. And you see all the wires going to the um, evaluation platform and the data acquisition platform. So uh, we tested this uh, platform at our university first in our own uh, labs, but in presence of teachers. And we carried out some tests in Tunisia at Ennis. You see here a picture of the uh, lab at, the, at Ennis in uh, uh, the winter term 2019-2020. This was in December. And we had also the nice opportunity to make this uh, lab also in Espin. You see here in the picture that we still needed some uh, generators uh, from the lab. Uh, but in the second version and after working out the improvements we get from the um, practice with this lab in, in, in these two and three universities, so Chemnitz, Ennis and Espin, we in the second version, which will be running beginning with this winter semester, we will have the generator already in the platform. So it is developing and we see how the students are well concentrated and well learning. And, you know, as uh, practice has also its charm. Yeah. And um, also the learning process, supporting the learning process and increasing the motivation.